Today's guest is my friend and yours, Andrew Chavon, a neighbor, a good buddy. Uh, he was on years ago when the show existed with Steve Rogers. They had a podcast for a while called Panic Attacking. That's dead. So is their marriage. But uh, we had him on solo this time. This is the second time we recorded an episode. We recorded one. I fudged up everything. Didn't get uh, saved. But he's back on this episode. We had a great time. It starts off real silly, as I've just been reminded. We play with a stuffed animal for a few minutes. We talk about the kooks on the subway. He's equally terrified of all the crazies running around New York City. Big source of stress. And uh, then we get into family history. Let me see. I got some notes here. What else do we talk about? More kooks. um, Parents. How comedy can suck the life out of you. um, Shirt riding belly should we blur it oh boy it gets ugly folks we talk about therapy uh lex the uh, producer here he was laughing his ass off so it's a fun episode it gets a little silly but we get a little serious too and um, there's a little bit of everything in here all right whoa we're live yes this is hard because, you know, Mindful Mental Jack, this is a very serious podcast, as you know. I know, it's as cool. I've done it before. Yeah, this is take two on Joe and I. I lost the files. I stink. I knew it. I knew it. You knew it. I knew it. I knew I it. it. And I reminded you, I'm like, don't lose this. You're, and you were like, I know. And then you lost it. Well, it's not that I, I don't know where. It's not that I lost it. I just don't know where it is. You I know. See? It's around. Yeah. Could surface. What was, first of all, that tripod, you're not going to be able to get a shot of it. It looks like a pussy on the top of it. Oh, Doesn't wow. It? You can yeah. fuck that. You could. I couldn't. I got a huge cock. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a little twat. I'd have to dye it a little bit, but then I could. <laughs> Maybe we'll insert. Do you lose weight in your cock if you dye it? <laughs> yeah, I think I think you do. When you lose weight, doesn't it go everywhere? No, your cock doesn't thin out. Well, it I should. guess maybe it does because your fingers thin out. Yeah, and your chin... Doesn't your chin shrink? I don't have one of those. (laughs) Hello, folks. (laughs) But anyways, yeah, we sat here and recorded this back in December. Was it December? Oh, yeah. I think it was December. And it was good. It was hot. It was strong. But, you know, I always love redos, so this is good. Yeah, redo. And I guess, uh, yeah, you called your parents Nazis or something. (laughs) Great. Well, (laughs) (laughs) something. You said they were horrible people and they blew it. No, they're great. No, no. I'm only kidding. I'm only joking. You didn't say that. But uh, I found the audio. The audio exists. Oh, good. But the video, I, I don't know. Well, is is it okay to retread our steps? Is the audio going to be released too? Or no, no, no like one will ever hear new? it. Okay, good. No, All it's right, gone. I don't know how to upload anything, anyways, because I can't remember what we talked about. But I, I don't either. It's funny. It's sad because I should have all this knowledge of you. Yeah, but I just it. <laughs> Right out the right out the asshole, isn't it scary? Do you worry about aging and, and losing everything and forgetting yes. everything? Oh yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's already happening. Uh, like, like for you, do, do, do you like forget? Like oh yeah, that was actually six years ago, but it feels like it was time shorter. and and, and hang, like sometimes you're hanging out with people and they tell you about a thing. You're like, I said that. <laughs> I don't remember that. What's worse is, and, and this has never happened to me, but I noticed it this year. I'll be telling somebody a story and they go, yeah, you already told me that. And yeah. I go, oh, I did? I don't even remember doing that. It's hard. I find that sometimes because like, I'm, I'm blessed with many, many friends. So you're like hanging out with a lot of people and usually you have one story at a time that you're yes, telling. Right. Which is hard. It's like I do Tuesdays with stories, but really you only get like four stories a year. <laughs> The rest is just like, oh my God, my luggage. Whoops. Yeah, yeah. Traffic was bad. <laughs> what about that weather? But like real story stories. I know, it's yeah. Rare. Where you get like a th- three act structure and there's a moment where you change, <laughs> yes. you know, in the middle of the story. Yeah. But so, yeah, I guess you, you repeat things, but I don't know. It's so hard to do a, a mindful metal jacket. I want to just be goofballs. We could just goof around. <laughs> well, we got this too. I mean, that's Poppy. <laughs> Yesterday, you know what's funny? I love Poppy. I bought him with my nephew. We went to FAO Schwartz and my niece and nephew. And my my nephew had a fever of like 110 degrees. And I was like, I'm buying. It was right before Christmas. And I was like, I'm buying everybody something in FAO Schwartz. And uh, they don't have like toys like they used to. 
It's all like stuffed animals and games. And no shit. dinosaurs, Power Rangers. I don't think so. Turtles. No. So my my niece got an octopus. Whatever this is called, it's called Jelly Cat. Ew. And my <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> so my, Dude. my niece my niece got an octopus and and then my nephew i was like all right pick one of the things but he was so out of it you know when a kid gets a fever they're like close to death right sometimes <laughs> he, was, he was all like wonky and he got this but it's a cup of coffee oh. it's like a to-go cup of coffee it's literally just like a brown <laughs> cup and it has little legs and we were like what like, like the record scratched and we were all like oh and i got the popcorn because i thought and I literally had this idea. I was like, we'll put it next to on the couch and we can yeah. watch movies with the popcorn guy. By the way, everyone listening to this audio can't see. It's a stuffed popcorn with a smiley face. Oh, that's great. But he's nice and soft. But yeah, my nephew, he's and I go back to the house and he's it's just sitting on his bed. It just look it's the shittiest stuffed animal of all time. <laughs> What's funny is uh I think you told me you were stopping the podcast with Ron on, and then I walk in and there's this. <laughs> so I thought you were gonna do a show with just this and yourself. Oh, it'd be so much less annoying. Bobby, what do you think? <laughs> Well, I like to make his legs run. If you, folks, if you're not watching on YouTube, you're missing out. I like to make him run like this. It goes up. <laughs> you see? Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, that's that's you running away from a kook. That, <laughs> that, now, one of the things we have bonded over is oh, our yes. fear of the kooks. Yeah. I really feel like I found a soulmate in you with the kook. <laughs> well, we are exactly the same. We watched, remember we watched Scream 6? We're like, this is nothing like the 6 train. I know. it's emba- That movie is embarrassingly bad. To do a horror movie in New York and not include complete psychopath meth addicts chasing civilians around is a big misstep. You have that, that new bit. I don't know if, if you're going to keep it in your act where you say Sarah was like, oh, you would have hated the subway yeah, today. Yeah, I'm doing it as a bit. There's a guy that's get a cigarette <laughs> like what did everyone else love it people <laughs> said to me all the time it's not just sour everybody says it they're like oh, oh you would have hated it there was a fucking meth addict throwing dog shit at the train I'm like, 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 like everyone, was everyone else relieved everyone else was like "Woo, yeah dog shit <laughs> yes yes a guy with no teeth screaming fuck you motherfucker and uh, everyone else was just hit with a wave of gratitude <laughs> <laughs> but you would have been bummed the way you are. Everyone's buying merch, you know, from the guy. You got any more <laughs> cigarette butts that you could sign for me? I told you the one. I got to do this. I got to try this tonight at Grove Thirty Four too. I was on the subway in t- and I stopped taking the subway through mid. T- like my therapist oh, me is too, in yeah. Union Square. So what I do now, and this is very inside New York, but I'll transfer it. Lex 59th and Lex to take the 4 5 because yeah. it's two stops and there's more people on it. Yeah, I do that too. Or I will walk because you can transfer from the N to the to the F by oh, walking. That's not bad. So I do that just to have less time on the subway. <laughs> but I was on a Midtown train and um, by myself. And so this is like so funny. It's like I, I got to shoot this as a movie or a, a, a short. And uh, I get on the train and then it's like empty at Times Square and a guy gets on with, you know, fucking roller skates with the wheels ripped off or whatever and he's smoking a cigarette he just sits right next to me like where you are it's like an empty train and he's just smoking a cigarette and so i'm like i'm gonna bail because god knows what because the folks at home that don't live in new york you're just trapped on the train with this person until the next stop which is about two minutes yeah and so i go i I mean i'm bailing so i get up and then as i get up the doors close in my face so now this guy (laughs) clearly saw me try to bail after he sat down him and so then i have to just play it off i'm like this fuck oh god that was my stop i wasn't paying attention i gotta sit back next to him like ah you know how it is brother (laughs) he's just blowing smoke in my face (laughs) yeah because he will think oh is he trying to escape me because he has money in his pockets that's what i would think yeah well and then sometimes people too they'll just be like because what happened to me in austin my situation was like you fuck you scared of us motherfucker and screaming and uh i'd be like actually yes i am yes yes you're yelling this is unusual (laughs) this is outrageous but anyways so you're terrified too yeah, and and every time I'm on the subway, actually, the first I remember the first time I saw a guy smoking was like the pandemic. Yeah, I, I never seen that, and I'm, in my head for some reason I'm like, 
Some guy's going to come in, some MTA officer, some police officer is going to come in, put that out, and, and arrest him. <laughs> He's going to put it out. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, this is, a, this is not allowed. But... <laughs> 10 stops later, I got like me- mesothemioma because <laughs> this guy's just puffing away. No one's doing anything. No, it's brutal. Now, do you think about leaving the city? Uh, fantasized about it. I mean, there's just so many little things that are, the kooks have triggered just an avalanche of resentment toward this city. You know, it starts at the kooks. Yes. And then, and then trickles down to like even my landlord. I'm like... Can I live in a building that doesn't have my landlord living above me? You know, like it's it's no way to live. I, I feel like first of all, I, I have to clarify when we say kooks, we're not just talking about homeless people because no, many homeless right. people down on their luck. Yeah, they have no, they don't, you don't even, they don't bother you at all. Right, they sit there and say, hey, change, and and I'm quite giving. I have to add, yeah, and some kooks aren't homeless at all. No, that's just like a guy like with a boombox blaring, and he's like, what? <laughs> What? <laughs> like a kook is a wide range. Yes, yes. Anyone that like is is just rude but also may also kill you, you know, like like that's a kook to me. Yeah, a frightening person. Right, cuz there's rude people on the subway, people on the speakerphone. They're not a kook. A kook is somebody on right. the speakerphone but it's not plugged in or Yes, you know. danger. <laughs> right, right. It sounds like a Sinatra song. That's a kook to me. <laughs> that's a kook to me. Um, <laughs> and you're a kook to me. <laughs> uh, any jizz. But the city, yeah, it's brutal. It's, cause, uh, it's exhausting because I'll be on the train, eyes darting around. I'm like checking everybody out who could potentially just slug me in the face, you know? And and by the time I get to where I'm going, I'm mentally drained because yes. my eyes have been darting like a maniac for like two hours or how, however long it is. I feel it's like the beginning of The Godfather. I'm like... <laughs> You understand everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly how I feel. And because you're, you're all day you're just clocking people, going yeah. like, "What's this? Who's this?" And and some people, by the way, are just completely unaware of any of this. No, they're no. just like telling well, a story. Know. They're like, "Oh my god, I didn't get any spots this week. It was crazy." And I'm like, "There's a guy with a hook hand behind you, <laughs> giving you the finger," yeah. and uh, they have no. They're just completely immune to it. There was somebody close to the train, you know, where the train comes, the yellow part. Yeah, just like da- doing a TikTok dance. <laughs> I'm like, dude, your life is in your hands right now. It's Some, just all it takes is a kook just to go just just with the with their index finger just a little bit this way, just and, a nudge, and you're done. <laughs> but I, I I feel I was describing this the other day to my therapist, ironically, is that like it feels like I was in a a cult or a trance with this city for 15 years, and one day it just like hit me like. <laughs> This is this is inhumane. The, the train <laughs> roaring overhead, <laughs> and I see people like raising children here. They're like pushing a baby carrot, and the baby's like three months old. And there's just an end train, like, <laughs> and then a car that's like that has the fucking doof, 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 like whatever that sound is. Right, right. A bus, a bus exhaust blowing in its face. <laughs> <laughs> and the baby, tire rolls out. You can just see the baby like, ah. it's horrible. And that's why you meet people that grew up in the city. I won't name names, but they're just horribly neurotic lunatics. Yeah. Did you grew up here, Lex? No. Great. Or, uh, or, or like, like they're Pete Davidson. They're 20 years old and they talk like they're 58. <laughs> He probably has seen a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's 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 no good. But anyway, we should get into the the crock because we're twenty minutes in. We're just doing a comedy. That's been twenty minutes. Good, well, twelve. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> That's a great. That reminded me of Seinfeld. Well, what time is it? Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Oh, four o'clock. <laughs> Those are the little things that make that show so fucking perfect. <laughs> Oh, I've wait, heard, 4 o'clock. I haven't heard, <laughs> I haven't heard that one in a while. Uh, it's still good. And the, the great George line. What time is it? 4.15. Right now? <laughs> Anywho, let's get in there. All right. Where are you from? Because you're, 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 you have a good head on your shoulders. You're very, um, what do you call it? Put together. Centered. Centered. But you also seem afraid of everything. So I, I, I feel like kinship with you. Well, you know, I put the stuff in perspective. Kook, life, you know? <laughs> Kook could end my life. I have that tattooed on my stomach. <laughs> Kook life. Kook life. <laughs> I got on my knuckles. <laughs> uh, 
It's supposed to be a serious, hard hitting podcast. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, I mean, it'll it'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. But so you hate your parents? Huh? <laughs> no, they're good. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh my god what was i gonna say oh but so you know i'm worried about my life but then you know comedy people take that extraordinarily seriously which i can understand and which i also can't understand All right because there was like i just did albany and there was somebody there last year who had just started comedy they did a guest spot last year they're all happy last year smiles they watched every show and this year they're hosting, and all they're doing is laying back in the green room, going, "Can't believe this place!" You know, I get booked b- here barely once a month, and I go, "You're one year in." God, it's so crazy. Well, it's, it's comedy's like the the ring from Lord of the Rings. It just like sucks the life out of some people. Yeah, it really does. And there's uh, so many like broken people in in comedy and and everywhere with yeah. every business, which I try to remind myself all the time. Although it's hard to really believe sometimes but you know if, if we were plumbers would be like what <laughs> billy's doing the plumbing at the empire state building <laughs> but uh, it does feel like yeah it, it just breaks you down because it's like a, it's a race to the top and that's life in general and i don't know people just grip on too tight yeah and it's like race to what top the top of the albany funny bone where no one gives a crap <laughs> like like chill out well it's hard yeah and i wish i, I, I we talked about this yesterday because uh, we had a bunch of comics over hanging out and like we were talking about how like it's hard to give advice to comics like young comics will ask advice and you're like well i started in a totally different time like right when i started it was like phone numbers were seven digits long and you had to like <laughs> you knew them you had to email you, a vhs tape literally you, vhs you, 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 yes oh, yeah. i sent out vhs and like a black and white headshot that had my phone number on it oh wow i'm 150 years old so it's funny because people are like what's your advice and you're like like I, I, you know more than i do you're yeah. 11 i don't know i don't have a tiktok <laughs> account and they also have podcasts that can give them advice i feel like that's every podcast now is like yeah advice for that we did you know i didn't have that when i started either no and you can just message people like when i was started i couldn't just write to greg giraldo and be like <laughs> hey can i bend your ear <laughs> be like what which i get all the time people all the time are like hey can i ask you something I'm like no i don't even know you <laughs> yeah but the advice that i was saying it's like that i needed and i my advice to everybody out there in comedy or not is take care of your mental health yes because i know so many comedians and, and non-comedians obviously too that have just have lost their fucking minds absolutely yeah. just completely out of control and i've seen so many com- comedians rise in two years to to what i thought was the top and then just disappear like literally in thin air <laughs> never to be heard again i'm like where do they go so right. it doesn't it's just there everyone has their own path and it's like that's i think that's what keeps my sanity and my head on its shoulders is i've seen so many people skyrocket and just explode yeah <laughs> and go away well i feel like you do a good job of of um of balancing oh yeah yeah i got personal yeah. personal life yeah and the girl my, my girlfriend doesn't have social media she doesn't care care about algorithms or That's content amazing. so we're when we hang out we're, we're there we're just like you know watching an episode of the simpsons or so she has no social media whatsoever no she has like a twitter account but just for the news but she doesn't post tweets right right but doesn't have instagram doesn't have tiktok or or whatever else is out there and does she ever get caught up just strolling twitter i don't think so no what's it called it's yes scrolling did you is that what you said i said strolling oh no that's wrong (laughs) (laughs) i knew you know when you say a word and you're like something felt just a little off (laughs) scrolling yeah what's the what's the framing like is my crotch in here because i feel like my, my shirt keeps riding up. Now, you are self-conscious. Because <laughs> <laughs> it just rode up again. No, I think you're all right. All right. Yeah, I think you look great. Okay. Um, I can't see what the camera sees. Well, yeah, me neither. The crotch is in frame. The crotch is in frame? Yeah, of course. Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, no. <laughs> they they okay. saw some button then. Saw Be- some what? Belly button. Oh, that's all right. All right. Navel. We'll blur it out. <laughs> Please pixelate it. I heard a great, um, <laughs> I heard a great analogy years ago, a metaphor years ago, about life. It's like you're holding on to a rope and someone's pulling the rope through. The the tighter you hold on to the rope, the more your hands are going to get fucked up and burnt and ripped and it'd be painful. That's true. But if you hold it loosely, it'll just kind of glide through. Yeah. 
That's something. That's not bad. <laughs> That's not bad. Yeah, I was like it's, a Buddhist philosopher guy. But I, I've had that situation at gym class with the rope. Oh, yeah. I thought you meant mentally. Like the oh, mentally? Part. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, but. well, it happens in Jaws and everything. And oh, yeah, Jaws, yeah. Yeah, great film. Yeah. We want to talk movies instead? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea. Two guys talking movies on the couch, you know? <laughs> yeah, wow. I don't think it's been done. Um... But anyways, you can't, you can't hold on too tight is the point. Yeah, people do. People are just so focused and they're focused on their hands instead of the object that they're pulling or, or their destination that the rope is leading them to. Is that what you mean? I don't know. You lost me. Okay. But do you go to therapy? I do. Yeah, I go twice or I'm sorry, twice a month. Oh, twice a month. I think I say twice a week. Because some of these people go every day. That's like oh, no. psychotic. I don't have the budget for that. <laughs> you do. <laughs> you. <laughs> um, so you go twice a month, every other week. That's what I'm doing now. Yeah, every other week. I used to go once a week. and then, Same. Yeah, we, and then she's like, you know what? Let's come twice a week, see how it goes. And it's been working out. I always have a, something to fill the whole hour. Once a week, everyone's like scrambling. Do you do a full hour or 45 minutes? Uh, I guess it's, I, I think, 50 minutes. Oh, wow. Zero. Yeah pretty good yeah because when i did once a week i'd have like half hour of stuff and then i'd be like so uh have you seen the new batman yeah <laughs> you know, like <laughs> no that does happen quite a bit where you have nothing it's like a good week when you're like i got a lot of stuff but i've definitely been in there and i'm like and then th and then you end up going down this weird hole of a thing that wasn't even bothering you yes all the time but she steers it there too she's like yeah how is that going you know where i'm like complaining about just something that happened to me outside of my apartment. She goes, how is the apartment thing going in your new place? I'm like, it's okay. I'm really talking about the kook outside of my place. Right, right. That bothered me. She wants to go like more into depth and uh, into some kind of psychic thing that I have. Right. If the I'm secure in my own house or something. Yeah, they know how to get in there deep. Does she yours take notes at all? She does, but then sometimes I got a reminder of things like, you know, my girlfriend's name or right. <laughs> what I do for a living or... <laughs> well, you know, the, the, the great story of um, Robert Dean has that bit. He was talking to his therapist and he'd been going for like about a year. And Robert Dean uh, goes, yeah, I just don't know what to do. And then his therapist goes, uh, you got to think about one person and one person only. Richard Dean. <laughs> And he's like, I think it's time to find a new therapist. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so wait, what brought you to therapy? Did you have were you a panic attack guy? What's your poison? Anxiety, panic attack, social anxiety. It's social anxiety. I got the I got the anxiety of saying no and asking for favors. Those are my pillars of unsuccess. You can't say no and you can't ask for favors. Yeah, I don't know. And then my therapist says that's that's social anxiety. You know, like I could talk to people. I know no problem talking to people, but when it involves saying no or asking for favors, I just crumble. So I was going through a, a breakup or I wanted to break up and I couldn't do it. You know, wow, I've been so, there. Yeah, and then... <laughs> And our buddy Steve Rogers. Yes, yeah, Steve. Our next door neighbor. You can probably hear us right now. Steve Big Dick. He'll know. He'll hear your voice. He'll be like, Siobhan was over, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I knew it. <laughs> we love you, Steve. I think, I think he does come in to look for clues. You know? He's like, You don't drink Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> he puts it in a clear plastic bag, sends it off to a lab. Siobhan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah so i met hold on i'm gonna digress a little bit here because you were talking about something oh wait the girlfriend oh yeah because steve so i was talking to steve he was also going through a breakup having a hard time oh, so right. he's like my therapist is great she's helping me through it and i'm like sign me up slappy <laughs> so oh. is that your first therapy you didn't go to, as a kid or anything uh no not really no my my mom is a therapist so oh whoa can we talk about that at all yeah. Hey, mom. She's going to be listening. <laughs> she watches this, really? She watches everything. They, they, I'll, something will be posted that I even forget I did. They'll be like, lovedeongoobers.com. But that's really sweet. That's touching. That your mom's like, I got to watch my sunny boy. Does she call you Andy? Yeah, she calls me Andy. Or, uh, yeah, and sometimes she calls me Ann. A -N. Really? I hate it. Oh, wow. Mom. <laughs> Stop saying Ann. <laughs> He's a boy. <laughs> Call him Drew. 
Yeah, that's that's a good one. Drew Bledsoe. D R U. So she's a therapy. Did you ha- did she have clients at the house when you were a kid? Uh, she would like you know, of course, pick me up from school, take me to her job, and they'd be in the waiting room, <laughs> all crazy. Really? Looking. Yeah. <laughs> all these crazy kooky. <laughs> really? Weirdos. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so you're aware of therapy at an early age? Yeah, and that's what made me adverse to it because I'm like, man, these people are nuts. You know, the people right. call in our house because they're crazy, or you know, they find the phone number in the phone book, or right. That's how I felt about like recovery. I was like, people at like AA meetings are like psychopaths. They're yeah. cool. They're former kooks, reformed <laughs> kooks. Right, They're right. Going in there. What the <laughs> fuck do these lunatics know? Uh, I guess therapies. Yeah, because the, nor- the normal people in therapy are the average non kooky people. They're not the ones that you notice. You know, just like homeless people or or whatever. I think that's what people think about therapy in general. Is it's for people that are like jumping out of buildings and like you know right. shitting their pants and cutting their own hair and stuff. Yeah, because um, even like The Sopranos growing up. I know you hate it, and I didn't really like it either. But <laughs> I can't, I can't have another battle about the Sopranos. No, I don't but hate it. I just die. It's not for me. But the first episode, he's like, "Therapy, come on." What yeah, yeah, cool? he's over the top and silly. Yeah, I yeah, remember. If... <laughs> he's unrealistic and <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's yeah. A goof. We just lo- everybody just clicked off. Even your mother was like, "Fuck this fucking idiot." <laughs> not my Andy. Not with this gentleman. <laughs> She's like, let's go in. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, man. It was rough. Like, when she picked me up from school, she'd go, Ann. Really? And I had to pretend it wasn't me. Oh, boy. Like, yeah, I guess there's some girl. This is Siobhan. What are you doing? Oh, man. Yeah. A lot of, uh, that might be the root of everything, <laughs> actually. Oh, probably. She called you a lady. Yeah. Back in the 80s. That was serious. Now, it's, that's whatever. That's no. like, nice. <laughs> When we were kids, that was like, you had to take your own life if someone thought you were a girl. If somebody does that now, yeah, people will reshare it and start a GoFundMe. Yeah. Um, which we support. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so But she, in the 90s, it was intense. It yeah. was a different time. Because so, oh, you're a couple of years younger than me. How old are you? I'm 36. Okay, so you're five years younger than me. About four, four or five. Are you turning 41? I'll be 41 in a couple of weeks. Oh, I thought you were two years. I'll be 43 by the time this comes out. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I must be... I'm, what year did you graduate? I graduated 2000. 2003. Okay. High school? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I didn't go to... <laughs> <laughs> so do I seem like a college guy? You went to VCU. Yes, yeah. It, yeah. Was, it was rough. Talk about kooks. That's the first time... That, that might be the source of my paranoia. Really? You had some kooks? Yeah, there was like it was, it's a city school, so like my dorm was like this tall building, and across the the dorm was this park where where kooks would roam. Oh no! What they city? Would, they would prey on us like lions and, on gazelles. That Richmond? Richmond, yeah. Oh, yikes! Yeah, so uh, and I went to like a private like Catholic school, like kindergarten through eighth grade. It was only fifty people in the in the grade. Wow. 25 per class. And I feel like that is the Rosetta Stone of everything wrong with me. Is Because if I did something wrong at kindergarten, it would haunt me until oh. I was 12 or whatever. It all comes from childhood. It's so crazy. It's like those formative years, zero through six. They just fuck you. Yeah, I know. And the kids are cruel. You know, they're like barbaric. Well, did you have siblings? I had a younger brother. So I kind of like paved the way for him. You know, I'm like, yeah, it's rough out there. <laughs> But I think I, I think siblings is one of the most damaging relationships, and especially you're the older one, so maybe you did more. Because it seems to me, and I'm not an expert, and I I listen to a lot of psychology podcasts and read, but also I, I live, man. Yes, and it just feels like the the older sibling feels amazing. Well, first of all, I I, I heard this recently that like most people or, or people in general are generally happy from birth till about four or five because they're the center of the world they're just everybody's taking care of them and they're unhappy if they have to if they have shit in their pants or if they're hungry right right but in general the general disposition is joyful yes that's a human right and then and this is real 
when they go to first go to school or preschool and become surrounded by people the same age uh-huh. and the attention is now get it that's when almost immediately human beings start to compare themselves oh a thousand percent naturally yeah. like a three-year-old kid goes to preschool and is like well that guy is getting more attention than me how come he looks better why is that sweater better than my sweater and in grades too yes yeah and it just we just devolve from there so i think with an older sibling what happens it feels like they have that at least they go home and they're still like okay i'm still number one here even though those kids have better whatever and then a younger sibling comes around and i'm the younger you're the older but the older one now is embittered and hurt that oh, they've yeah. been taken over but what happens is then they're horribly mean to the younger i was yeah yeah i, I was like tortured by it. and i have a an uncle and a cousin who are my sister's age so it was like three of them Wow. Well, just to be clear for the record, because they'll listen to, I have an older half brother, older half sister, but they were 10 years older than me. Right. So by the time I was in kindergarten, they were already out of the house, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So I was, uh, I just knew these older people, but you know, we're, 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 we're close now, but growing up, I mean, they were like teenagers, pimply faced, you know, listen to guns and roses or whatever being gen xers yes yeah, so you couldn't even connect with them really. no no I, I was just like obsessed with ninja turtles or whatever the hell was yeah on TV. yeah so you feel a little lost when i was a kid uh yeah i mean i have to like revisit that but yeah i do remember like having resentment toward my brother because i'm like i'm like uh i feel like you know, I, I uh, like, I think it's, you were making the point too, but I'm like, I was the head honcho at the house. Right. Now there's this other guy here. Yes. Now, uh, you know, the joy, the light has been dimmer toward me, brighter on him. Right. And I'm going to lash out cause I'm, I got horrible life outside of this house. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It goes back to what our comedy, we were talking about with comedy. It's like, this guy's got all these followers. What the fuck? Yeah. But it's, it's, it's only natural. And, it's just hard because you're always going to be older, so you're better at taking care of yourself. You have more wisdom, so you you need less attention. Yes. So you're always going to get less attention than this person. Yeah, I remember like, yeah, and it's always every sibling has this, or every firstborn is like the parents are like, oh, you can't watch that. It's PG thirteen. Right. And uh, and like they had the ratings on TV like seven was the limit i think like yeah, goosebumps yeah. the tv show seven it said like seven and younger can't watch it and i remember he was six i was nine and he's watching goosebumps i'm like nope i'm like i'm plugged to tv i'm it's, like you can't watch this i wasn't allowed to it's so weird because just a few years difference of maybe parenting stuff like my parents never did any oh yeah like, hey why? but i feel like the tv ratings came later but maybe i'm crazy maybe it, they, they were around when I was watching TV, but... Wow. Yeah, I guess I guess it happened. I don't know. I do remember when they did start, because it did come out of somewhere. So maybe I was like 15 and you were 11. How, so did you were you old when you graduated? How come we're only three years apart in grade, but it feels like five years apart in age? Well, 36 and 40 is four years. Oh, yeah, I'm 40. So when do you turn 37? I turn in April. I turn in a month. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we're exactly four years, but our graduation year is three years off. But well, that's one of the years, 2001, 2002, 2003. What's going on here? I don't know. Were you <laughs> held back? No. Or ahead? You were shot ahead? No. I, I, I don't think What's so. What's the math here? Am I crazy? So when I was, I graduated when I was 18 in 2000. So that would put you four years. Wouldn't you graduate four years later, in 2004? Well, what year were you born? 82. I was 85. This is so weird. Isn't Shouldn't that... we be three grades apart? What if we just discovered some crazy thing, like you were held back, like almost famous? <laughs> or held to forward, <laughs> pushed forward? <laughs> Maybe. I, I never asked my friends, but I thought we were all the same age. But this is weird, right? You're getting the same math I'm getting, right? This is not very good podcasting, I don't think. Uh, I, I don't know. No way, man. Yeah. Four years age, three grades. I think you're really smart. <laughs> I think they <laughs> moved it. you up a grade. I'll take it. Because I didn't get held back. I almost did. Uh, no, I, I mean, I didn't get bad grades. I didn't get good grades. So Okay. I don't know. Yeah, this is weird. 
we'll have to cut all this. Because I thought I started um, high school when I, in the year 2000. So then, then I graduated in 04. Could it be maybe, that you graduated maybe in 04? 04? Maybe it's 04 then, yeah. Is that possible? No, because I do have a shirt that says 03, but like the seniors. <laughs> but maybe I was a hand-me-down. <laughs> This is the worst five minutes of podcasting I've ever done in my life. I'm sorry, man. But I know it's my fault. I'm obsessed with this number. But any jizz. So you. Oh, you know what it is? Yes. No, I don't. I think I think it's because I'm 37. I'm not 36. I think I thought because 85 to now. Yeah. 37. So I think I just got my age wrong. (laughs) I think I'm 30. Did you just lose a year of your life? I swear to God, I thought I was turning 37, but I think I'm turning 38. Oh, boy. This is tough. Oh, this is rough. This is a low point. I had this I had this happen in reverse with my friend Tom Dustin, who oh, is an alcoholic. Well, you don't, I don't think you're an alcoholic. No. <laughs> well, my friend Tom Dustin, one year, we were out drinking, and he was like, yeah, I'm fucking bummed. I'm 35. And I was like, no, you're 34. And he's like, I just turned 35. And we, we had this long debate, and I was like... Dude, you were born in 1975. Like we did the math, <laughs> yeah. and but you lost a year. He gained a year. Well, I've been looking forward to uh, turning 37, but I just, well, because last year I didn't have a, I didn't have a party for two years. Why? Because of COVID. Because of COVID, I just live with uh, a girl I no longer date. And yeah, last geez. year, what? I had just started dating uh, my current girlfriend, so I don't think we did anything. When's That's, your birthday? We're going to have a party. It's April 30th. Oh. But uh, but no pressure. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, <laughs> mine's April 6th. You around? Uh, yeah, I'm around. Oh, yeah. All right. Maybe we'll uh, have That's a It's a Thursday? Yeah. Okay, I'm around, yeah. All right. We got we to gotta kick it in here. This got... I'm sorry, yeah. We really came apart here. I just had an existential crisis that... Uh, I'm gonna be 38. That's old. I yeah. mean, you're old. You're older, but yeah, 38 is good. old. Hey, folks! This episode of Mindful Metal Jacket is brought to you by Sheath Underwear, my favorite product on earth. I just did an amazing ad read for Sheath Underwear, and I wasn't recording because I'm dumb. You know who's not dumb? Robert Patton, the creator of Sheath, comedy fan underwear extraordinaire this man is the best i can't wait to see him at skank fest in a couple weeks he always loads me up with some underwear and i always load up those underwear because i have a big penis folks this episode is brought to you by that's the wrong one sheath underwear baby everybody can tell you're trying to peel your dick off your leg okay you think you're looking secretive they see the hand in the pocket they see the butt wiggle Stop peeling your dick off your leg. Get sheath underwear. They're designed to not have your dick and leg touch or your dick and balls touch. My dick and balls have not touched anything in a very long time, folks, because I wear sheath underwear. This summer, switch to sheath. Sheath underwear keeps things breezy down there with a pouch for your dong and a pouch for your balls. You'll be comfortable no matter the weather. Available in a ton of cool patterns, Robert patterns, and you can feel great and show off your sense of style. I'm not joking, folks. All I wear is sheath underwear. This is not just an endorsement because, hey, he sends me a check. He doesn't. I mean, maybe he does. I guess he does. But he sends me underwear more importantly. I don't care about the money. Keep sending the money. I love these underwear. I'm wearing them right now. I don't even have to look. Look at this. Sheath underwear. Bang. This is the Colorado underwear. Chicks dig it. It's the best. It really is. Comfortable. Cool keeps everything separated it's the best and we didn't forget about our sweaty boobed listeners a lot of women listening to this and a lot of sweaty tits out there summertime can be brutal for you too check out sheath sports bras bikini briefs and boy shorts to keep it breezy and trendy i love boy shorts go to sheathunderwear.com and use code metal to get 20 percent off your first order 20 percent, folks that's a fifth Plus, Sheath Underwear's 100% money-back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code METAL. Get Sheath Underwear, support the show, support your balls. Go do it now. I'm wearing it. Why aren't you? Back to the show with my pal, the hilarious and delightful Andrew Chavon.
But 40s is the best decade for like comedy. All the comics blow up in their 40s, the ones that have gotten big. And yeah, it's true. 40, you have a lot of wisdom and you're not dealing with like serious health issues yet. I think 50, you really got to be like, oh my God, here we go. Yeah, 40. Uh, I feel like Bill Burr hit his stride and Louis. Louis, yeah. And the other guy. Well, you're doing good too. I'm doing all right. Yeah. Uh, not as good as some. <laughs> But you have a good mentality too. Like I never you. hear you complaining about other comics. You know, like like why did they get something you didn't get? You know, like you never complain. Oh well, I'm uh, yeah. I, my I get uh, sad or jealous, but it's all because of my own doing. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, I didn't do that. I, I like adamantly was like, you don't videotape a podcast. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, nobody wants to watch a podcast. <laughs> We're not doing it. So, and I mean, this podcast, I was like, I'm going to take a few weeks off and it's been nine years. So yeah. And then reels, I'm like, I'm not going to fucking have someone videotape my set and clip it. That's crazy. Uh, so yeah. it's all my own uh, doing, but it, that's what's hard is to balance trying to feel like an artist and trying to keep your mental health and take lots of time off, which I do. And then accepting that you're not going to be as successful as people, other people. Uh, yeah, that's a struggle. Well, that's what I was saying. Yeah, everyone has their own path that will lead to success eventually in their own way. And yeah, like you're a touring comedian. That's that's success. I feel like that's the only success you can have now. Well, it's interesting because yeah, it, and this is a, a matter of perspective with all things in life is. If you look, you should only be comparing yourself to yourself, your younger self, and it's like my. 41 year old if you told 30 year old me freshly sober me with no money and no apartment or anything that i would be doing this you'd be like oh my god amazing <laughs> that's yeah. a little load off my mind yeah but we have um hedonistic adaptation they call it you just adapt to what you have eventually right. and you get bored with it yeah like yeah. I, I think i have like one of the best apartments of anyone i know oh yeah but you have it decorated too my walls are bare <laughs> i got nothing at all <laughs> But after a while, you're like, I need another apartment. I, I need another room. I have one bedroom. I want to be here. I want a house. I want a yard. And you adapt to those things. So it's it's difficult to not keep adapting to these things and being like, I need more. I want more. That's what my therapist says. Like, like one of the good things she says is like, oh, you got to look at yourself, like how you were a year ago instead of what somebody's doing right now, because who knows that person might be the same place they were a year ago and they might be unhappy. Right. But as long as you're doing better than what you did a year ago, then you should be happy. And it is. It's gratifying. Yeah. No, I, mean, I was talking to my buddy the other day, my best buddy, Derek, about... I was like, yeah, this guy's doing whatever, 15 theater has a million dollars, and uh, I, I just wish I was doing as well as him. And he's like, well, it feels like you're just comparing that one aspect because he's like, <laughs> my son thinks you're like you're like his hero he's like talking about how great you are he like right. he's like crying because he misses you he's like i don't know does that person have that yeah is right. that happening and he's right. like we just went on a trip he's like it was like the best trip of my life like changed my whole perspective on life and this other guy i don't know what the fuck he's doing yeah yeah you just look at the money you don't look at maybe he's <laughs> like depressed or yeah like he's, completely coming apart at the seams and, yeah yeah like frazzled yeah but i do that too i do uh take breaks which are good yes. i feel like i never used to do that until until covid i used to like like sweat if i didn't have a spot i'd work to get a spot every night and then like at christmas i would take off and i'd be like this is great <laughs> right right <laughs> but then but i would be always worried if i if i didn't keep working something would would change or not work and then the world ended for a year and everything was the, like you know right i didn't lose I, I, at least I think the ability to tell a joke. Well, I always have this too. You're always in your mind. Everybody's out working, or at least in my mind, everybody's out working. It's great. Like, and I always think this too because I'm like, I can't watch a movie. I should be doing push-ups and, and listening to a set at the same time. Yeah. And then everyone I talk to is like, Have you watched all eleven seasons of the the Booger Twins? And I'm like, <laughs> What? Like everybody's seen every show. I know. So it's like it, it just shows you you're, the distortion of reality is like in my mind. Everyone's just working working around the clock right but literally every single person watched uh shark tank or whatever the fuck it is yeah or the fleischmann's or whatever that yeah is. so you're like oh somebody's watching 12 hours of tv <laughs> they're not just working but that's yeah. what you think yeah uh and also like if you take a week off 
that's good. You get to recharge and, and have a different perspective on your act or your situation. And also, you know, I took a year off. So a week off isn't anything in compared to that. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm good about taking a lot of time off. I'm also like, I, whatever, I feel like grateful, which is a, a huge part of happiness is just gratitude and positive self-talk negative self-talk is like the number one contributor to depression and anxiety oh a thousand percent yeah. sitting around being like i'm a piece of shit because it's sp- it spirals too because it'll make you binge eat or whatever your vice is and then you feel shame about that right plus you got all the other shame and my thing is too with, with comedy we're talking about comedy specific because that's what we do and i'm sure most people listening aren't comedians but with whatever your job is too it's like I think I have this thing where I'm like, I take time off and I'm like, oh my God, I haven't been on stage in four days. And then you go and do like a weekend. You do four, you're immediately thrown completely back into it. Yeah, of course. It's like if you go do four headlining shows in a weekend, it's not like Sunday you're like, I still got to catch up. (laughs) You're like, I just did. Like once you're doing it again, and I'm sure it's the same with roofing. You're like, I haven't roofed in 10 days. Right, right, right. You go and roof a house, you're like, Oh, I'm back. I'm back in it. Yeah. It's not like you're like, I need 30 consecutive days of roofing before I feel like a roofer again. (laughs) Um, If that analogy makes any sense. No, no, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Like that's why people take vacations. Like people in Europe, they go away for like a month. Yeah. And then they do whatever European like croissant baking or whatever their job (laughs) is. They pick that up right away. Boy, they kick ass over there in Europe. They They really really they really do their mindset i mean i i know whatever whenever when i'm but you know, they just have they got it figured out it feels not figured out i know paris is on fire as we speak <laughs> but you know what i mean and uh you well, know, they, they the have Ukraine their vacations is, their vacations are figured out yes they got something going on there but so did you ever have like a panic attack were you ever a panic attack guy or just hardcore anxiety just hardcore anxiety sometimes it would be so bad where i would be like frozen you know like I wouldn't yeah. be able to even speak or uh, it could make me catatonic, which is pretty <laughs> insane. <laughs> like what time, uh, like in college we had like this, um, like, you know, c- like dance and somebody set me up on a blind date. They were Ooh. like, this girl likes you. She, she's into you. She wants to be your date. All you gotta do is just meet her here. I was like, all right. And then I sh- saw her and I couldn't, I couldn't speak. I couldn't. Wow. I was just, silent just nodding and she told my friend yeah i don't think it's gonna work out oh jeez. now did you ever have a, <laughs> reminds me of one of my favorite stories ever which is nothing to do with that but very funny to me maybe it could be a bit my friend was getting married and then i was single at the time and i said to his wife i was like do you have any friends she's like i have one single friend coming and i put in a good word and when i met her i just wasn't really into her i didn't feel i wasn't feeling it whatever and also i'm just nervous i'm just uh, i'm like a yeah, nervous nelly and i wasn't we just didn't click and so it was one of these weddings it was like a destination wedding like four days past and the last the night of the wedding there was the reception and the after party and then like the after after party the bar and it's like 3 a.m the lights all come up and i'm like in a blackout and i go up to my friend's wife and i go is it too late to make a move on your friend <laughs> and she goes yeah <laughs> i've had that too it's like all right okay fair i've it done was just that too. four days of like oh maybe uh, and then like at the last second you're just like maybe now they're like no yeah. yeah i've had that too or uh this girl gave me her number in front of my friend he's like you gotta call her i'm like ah, i couldn't do it i couldn't do it and then at two in the morning i'm like i'll do it call her at two she's she's asleep oh, wakes God. up totally blow it it's brutal i mean because i wait too long it's too scary now did you have and i know you don't want to talk about your parents who's gonna watch but did you did you get relationship guidance sex talk anything no nothing yeah (laughs) they know it (laughs) i was i was i got it all from like sitcoms and seinfeld which yeah that's a bad one to get it from it's a bad life lesson show (laughs) Um, but it was all from that and you know my friends were all dorks too they couldn't help me by the way, see my poster? I got all 89 Jerry girlfriends up there. That's not bad. The show. It's pretty cool. Uh, I think it's 89. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or maybe it's 69. 69, excuse me. Just from, just from the outfits, I I can tell who they you are. You can recognize a lot of them. Well, there's the girl with the dress that wears the same dress every day. Oh, yeah. But anyways. Don't, um, wait, come back. Do you wear the same dress every day? <laughs> Why do you wear the same thing every day? <laughs> <laughs> um, me and my same clothes. You and your different clothes, me and my same clothes. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel the same way. I got no guidance, no, no sex talk. No People talk about the birds and the bees and their dad giving them the talk. No. My dad, who I love, and it's great, but like no one taught me to shave. I've never shaved my face with a handheld razor once. Oh, really? No, no one ever was like, "Here's how it happens. This is what goes on." Yeah. Or, or like, I remember tying my shoe. Like, I wasn't like taught how to tie my shoes or a tie. I can't tie a tie to this day. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I can't remember if if he taught me how to shave, but I don't know. Well, clearly not. No a beard. <laughs> But, like, as far as, like, the facts of life, life advice, uh, yeah, I got nothing. Yeah. They uh, they think they were... I, I kind of was, like, like a self-watering plant. You know, they'd come home yeah. from work, give me the food. I'd sit down in front of the TV, yeah. go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's like, yeah, no one was like, all right, sex with a woman is like that. You got to squeeze her nipples, and then if you come in her, you have a kid. Like, literally, not, like, less than nothing. I remember I asked my dad because because they talk about in Seinfeld sex and all, I was like, Dad, what's sex? And he looked like he just like bumped his elbow into a into a corner and went ah ah yeah it's <laughs> it's That's when when people love each other and then he, he uh, went back to gardening or whatever he was doing. Yeah, that's brutal. I mean, I didn't even think to ask. I would never ask anything. I just sat and I didn't really ask it. a lot, but that one I just couldn't figure out on my own other stuff I'd just kind of make up but even that I kind of made up something crazy in my head of what it was well Seinfeld was weird because I feel like we were both raised on Seinfeld and you can hear the influence uh, and um, have you heard Tuesdays with stories <laughs> very Seinfeldian but they uh, there was stuff that we were young because I remember the episode the move the move the I move I was like I don't know what and I remember my dad coming in late to the episode and they were talking about it he's like what's the move and I remember being like I think it's like panting I, I don't know because I couldn't yeah, I had no idea they were talking about eating out Elaine. I was like 13. <laughs> well, I still 12. don't even know. Watch rewatch the episode older. I still don't know what the knuckle was or. I think it's all. Oh, it's all the pussy. Though. Oh, They're okay. Doing something to her pussy. With, you figured that out, right? I figured that out. I just don't know <laughs> knuckle wise. I don't know. Yeah, I'm I guess I could just I guess throwing I... a knuckle in there every once in a while and giving a noogie. <laughs> But also, are we supposed to be designing our own moves? I got no moves. No, old well, Putty didn't. Yeah. My move is to hand over a vibrator and say, have a nice time. <laughs> I'm certainly not doing anything. My move is paying for dinner. Going. <laughs> but, That's foreplay for me. Yeah. You know, paying for things. There you go. But uh, so anyways, you, what what was like, the so the relationship brought you to therapy and you just stayed? Yeah, because I was like, man, this is great. Like it was like just such a like a sh like it should be done in addition to showering. You know, it should be I like agree. a basic like hygienic thing is going there and just being cleansed. Yeah, and then you're free to worry about the next thing instead of just it all piling up like some residue. Yeah, no, I think everyone should be uh, required to learn meditation and go to therapy at some point, even if it's like for like if I ran the country or whatever yeah, in a nation I'd be like we start teaching meditation in third grade and then once you turn 21 you gotta go at least four therapy sessions a year that's yeah. like required by law are we fucking death penalty yeah cause I think I, I had a guidance counselor but all he did was like yeah you should be like a plumber when you grow up like oh, he, guidance counselor forget about it yeah it just made me more nervous whoever that was no my guidance counselor didn't give a shit i was such a bad student that they were like i think the guidance counselors only in my school cared about people that like had a future oh okay like it felt they like selected them because we went and they sent all of us to talk to them once and i remember i remember then thinking this was crazy and still do now because they were like um well where are you going to go to college and i was like i'm not going to go to college I oh, want to so be a comedian. You knew that in high school? Yeah. Oh, good for you. And they were like, oh, well, that's no good. That's not good. You got to go to college. But I remember being like, but I don't want to study anything. I don't want to be a thing. I'm going to do comedy. So I'm going to go do the thing. Well, good for you. And then there was all these kids that would go, were going to college. Most people were going to college. 
And then they were like, I don't know what I'm going to study. I'm right. just going to go. And I remember, and I think fucking whatever your time has proven me correctly. Yeah. That they're all in crazy debt and then they don't even do what they study. <laughs> but these people, these adults were telling me I'm insane and they're smart. Well, you actually were even smarter because based on your stories, you were like a raging alcoholic when you were 18. You would have <laughs> flunked, flunked out with debt. Well, that's the thing to me about college that I felt like I didn't. I felt like you were never getting the proper info, but no one was telling me like everyone just fucks in college <laughs> because I, that, that's what struck me is like everyone that was like a dork in high school. I was like cool in high school and everybody, all these fucking nerds were just <laughs> knee deep in pussy. And I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> Nobody emailed me and said, hey, go to college because everyone fucks there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, yeah, you, that's true. You missed out on that. I'm worried about your mom now. I don't even know this woman. She's going to hear this and be like, who is this man you're hanging out with talking about knee deep in pussy? She's going to ruin you, Anne. Well, it's been ruined way before you, so don't worry. Yeah, he swears. I do, yeah. I swear. Uh, one time I gave the middle finger. To who? Uh, some guy honking his horn. Oh, good. you got to be careful. It, I know. Well... I mean, that was 15 years ago. Uh, Colin Quinn gives me all these wonderful life lessons. I, I knew Colin when I first moved here. We were, uh, I was driving around somewhere and, you know, Colin loves boxing and shadow boxing. And all. So he was showing me these, he goes, oh, fucking, he's doing all these boxing moves. And we had a heavy bag at his house. And then later we were driving and I just started laying on my horn and he's like, <laughs> Hey, this isn't Whitman. He like, you're using those boxing lessons a lot sooner than you thought if you keep honking like that. But it was, I was like, I just moved to the city and I was like, hey, what is it? And he's like, dude, you can't do that. Yeah, I chilled out. I was like, people are going to fucking smash the shit out of your car. I, I chilled out pretty fast because of that too. Because I would be offended because in Virginia, you know, like everyone drives slow, you signal, and then when you let them somebody in the lane, they wave to you. Yes. And then that completes the transaction. Yes. And I'm, here they just cut in front of you, no signal, no wave, and keep going. And that really like got to me. I after. still have that. <laughs> yeah. I, I still Manners are the glue of society, they Jerry. Don't, they don't have them here. No, it makes me crazy. No, I, I haven't gotten one wave. I do that when I hold a door. I'm a big door holder because I'm a gentle man. And then like I'll hold the door. And if people walk through without acknowledging you, I'll literally be like, you're welcome. Don't worry about it. It opened itself. I'll, you know, I can't. Yeah, yeah, Not. yeah, yeah. And some people, even friends, will just not even touch the door or say thank you. You just literally, they just walk right out. I can't stand it. I fight to open the door. Somebody's opening for me. I'm like, I got it, I got it. And yeah. They go, No, I got it. And then I go, Well, thank you very much, sir. And then yes, I, I bow. I do. I go, Holy! <laughs> I, 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 like, I'll blow them the whole thing. I, I just really <laughs> express the gratitude. You Put some to. gratitude in your attitude, folks. You got to. And but now it the, the you know when I <laughs> let somebody lets me in their lane, I don't wave because I feel like a freak. You know, like I don't. No, you got to wave. You got to keep it up. I'm perpetuating the. the no, they brought me down, Jerry. No, stay up. When they go low, we go high. <laughs> I don't think that worked. Peace, brother. I don't what do you mean? Worked. That worked in spades, baby. We, we <laughs> kicked ass. I don't think that worked for Hillary. I, mean. I know. I know. I was joking. Oh, okay. Uh, I yeah. don't know if there was another example. She lost. What can you do? <laughs> <laughs> I think she made a couple clerical errors. We were talking about this yesterday. Oh, yeah. Clerical oh, you weren't errors. here. You weren't uh, clerical. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, strategical? Mm. We were talking about this yesterday, not to get political. But I, I, I always love that 2016 election, the night before the election, Hillary's on stage with like Beyonce and LeBron. And she's like this, I got the blacks on my team. And you're like, well, these are like the ultimate elites. <laughs> They're billionaires. You completely lost the plot. <laughs> it's like you're a billionaire on stage with billionaires. Right, right. These aren't the black people you're going for. Like, it, no. this is so funny. Like, you should have people with hard hats on stage and boots. <laughs> right, right. That's right. what Democrats are. Well, that's, were. What, that's what Trump did. Yeah, of the, course. The hard hats. Well, that's right. I mean, that's like the th uh, now we're just doing a political podcast. But like in 2016, you look at a Trump rally, you're like, hey, guys, just it felt like a, a, a sci fi movie. Like I'm like <laughs> Richard uh, uh, Gold, Jeff Goldblum. I'm like, uh, hey, fellas. <laughs> Trump has 300,000 Democrats at his rally. I'm like, these are like union guys. I, I think we're in trouble here. But anyways. Yeah, I know. I digress. I saw it coming. There's a lot of like plumbers and construction guys and cops. Like, woo -hoo -hoo. I'm like, <laughs> right. those are our voters. Yeah. By our, I mean, I, you know, I'm an independent, but you know what I mean? Anyways, 
This uh, this all an hour of talk, and there's gonna be 300 emails being like, "You fucking piece of shit." <laughs> I didn't even say anything. Um, it's true though. Watch the footage. It's yes. you, it's exactly what you said. No, it's it's wild. And then yeah, that's why you won Michigan and and the other one. And uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota. Wisconsin, he won yeah. all of them. Um, and Ohio, of course. But Ohio is just red now. I think. Yeah, I think because everyone blue moved away or yeah just gave up but anyway it's just a, <laughs> it is just such a funny idea to have like the biggest celebrity multi-millionaire and you're all like <laughs> dancing, and you're like this i don't think you're doing it right well, but anywho twitter also would be like look at this like they'd they'd be supportive of it you know but i think i think twitter messed up the election too because they made you think more people thought a one way when they didn't right of course yeah yeah yeah, it was wild, but whatever. Now we're back safe and sound in good old 2026. Yeah, good old Joe and Ann. Hey, Joe Ann. Joe Ann. Joe Ann and Poppy. <laughs> Joe Ann Poppy. <laughs> Joe Ann Fabrics. <laughs> Joe Ann Pop, baby. Uh, but so you're feeling good, and we got to wrap this thing up with a bow. But you, you seem good. When I first met you, I met you on Steve, and you and Steve had a podcast. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Panic Attacking. Yeah. Which was an anxiety podcast. Yeah, yeah. We had ours before this one. I know there was some beef there. <laughs> well, it was a joke beef. Jesus. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, I didn't take it seriously. Yeah. Oh, okay. Jeez. But I think our fans did. Our fan, I get emails like Joe's doing what you guys did. Oh, whoa. Well, you guys were a pair. That's true. Yeah, you were so you're solo. Yeah. And I was up there talking about panic attacks and anxiety when you guys were in high school. That's back true. When yeah. you were, back when you were 18 or however old you claimed to be. <laughs> but um. <laughs> Any jizz, you had the podcast. That's still out there. People can still hear it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, go check out old episodes. Check out the episode with you. I think you did it once or twice. You might have done it twice. I think I did it once, and then you guys both came on Mindful Metal Jacket. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So you've been on this show. We just never did it solo. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But that's where I met you, and I thought you were like half retarded or something. I thought, this guy's a kook. He's got... I thought you were going to be like... Uh, like oh i don't know what's anything but you're actually quite <laughs> well adjusted i feel like <laughs> well that was during the worst time of my life it was 2020 you know I okay had a mean girlfriend i live with so. but i think just from like seeing you on there talking and then uh, and with steve I, I was like oh he must be like he's a kook oh okay yeah well that was a different dookie. that was a heightened version of me too right I because you know i had to match steve's energy so right you know <laughs> right but yeah you're uh you're all right thanks man yeah i um but also i've i've come a long way since that time too oh that's good yeah i believe so and you, you've only been therapy. in therapy for those couple years yeah i've been in therapy yeah so for four you know here i go again 2018 what is that that's Four this f five years ago this year five years ago okay that's what wow I say, four yeah oh so you only got into therapy a year after me I think seventeen that's when I was really bottoming out what really well I was oh, in wow. therapy as a child and then in my twenties this is my oh. this is my third go round yeah this bout of therapy oh okay I thought. When I talked to you about therapy, I thought you were like the guru, like you've been doing it for decades. Well, I have. I mean, I guess I have. I, mean, I, I went to therapy when I was seven, 1989, which I have all the notes, which I think I read in the podcast at one point. It was crazy. Oh, wow. They're like really wacky. They're like, Joe's obsessed with graves and AIDS and cancer. All he talks about is cancer and AIDS. And you were worried that this I was would, seven. That there was there, that would happen to you or you were yeah. just... That, yeah, and I would all, like a convo. I, all I would ever talk about. I had an imaginary friend. That's all I ever talked about. And I was like, I would, I would draw all these violent photos. And I was a total introvert. I couldn't talk to anybody. Yeah, me too. Yeah, they were like, this kid, there's something wrong with our son. He doesn't speak. Wow. And I would sit with my hands folded too, always at every class and everywhere I went, silently <laughs> with my. I'd be like this. <laughs> and then, and what, then when I did talk, it would only be to family members about AIDS. Well, <laughs> oh my God, it's wild. Yeah. You were a Legion of Skanks fan? I was, I was, uh, I was a mess. <laughs> I was just a horrible mess. What? What? So what snapped you out of this? I don't know. It wasn't until later. I mean, like high school. I feel like high school, I started to like be in like on teams and I, I, This I was you baseball. for 10 years? The AIDS and the folding? Well, I was, I mean, I started to talk a little bit more, but high school is when I flourished and became the Joe you know and love. Okay. I mean, uh, you know? Okay. That was college for me. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, high school, I was still like, 
the goofy guy you thought I was on panic attacking. Well, something I think about all the time is like I was functioned best in high school and what I did I was like an athlete so I was part of something I was on a team and I was always hanging out with friends and I was also running like five to seven sometimes nine miles a day so I try to incorporate those like if I can exercise and be social that'll help yeah Oh, well, so I try to throw these little hangs over here. Yeah, I, lo- I love these. Yeah, same same with me growing up too. Even though I had like th- three friends, the the hangs helped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yes. well, well, congrats for snapping out of that. Yeah, it would have been bad. It could have been could have been ugly, folks. And then I, I think Springsteen, old Brucey boy. And you watch Seinfeld too. Seinfeld was that, uh, that help. I mean, I don't know how many principles I got. I mean, I got a sense of humor from that, I guess, but well, I wasn't you, like learning life. Because you told me the first time I did this, the the, the defunct episode that you would tape every yeah. episode and rewatch them. Yeah, like, yeah. I have, I still have VHSs of like all those original, like season seven, eight, and nine. I have all the original recordings on VHS. So, but that was during the folding hands AIDS time. I mean, I had been, I'd gotten a little bit better. I mean, I was that was when I was a child. It was like okay. really bad. I did a little bit better in middle school and stuff but um yeah i would come out when i first started doing stand-up i would drive home and then just watch pop and seinfeld i would watch four episodes a night oh that's awesome yeah it was great and then i remember being bummed when the dvds came out because i liked that i was the only one that had everything on vhs (laughs) but that's my i feel like that's uh, the uh the the seinfeld because i remember that was the first show me and my parents would watch together and laugh yeah yeah. i feel like that kind of put in the inception of the comedian into me yeah i think i don't know if that happened to you that was part of it also yeah around the aids time a little bit later 1990 so it must have been a year later that george carlin um doing it again or jamming in new york or one or both of those was out and then like vh1 my uncle dale showed me all this like vh1 spotlight and i was getting really into stand-up oh wow as like a young boy yeah, we would go to the video store and rent uh, every Dice Clay hour. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just laugh and laugh, my, my, you know, my dork friends. Yeah, yeah. Dice Clay and then Eddie Murphy would go rent Delirious. Delirious, yeah. Louis Anderson and uh, Gallagher. Gallagher? Oh, I, oh, I remember he would, he would replay on, on uh, Comedy Central. I remember the one hour, he, his encore, he just came out in big high heels and walked <laughs> around. He had no choke. He just walked around in big high heels. That's hilarious. And waved. <laughs> That's and gold. Even, even as a 10-year-old, I'm like, something's off here. I don't think this is funny. That's hilarious. But he had some bits. He had like dumb, D-U-M, no, D-U-M-B. And he was at the desk and he had some really funny stuff. He had a great bit about how the baseball, instead of a mound, they should have a pit. And, the, and you don't know who's going to pitch. The pitcher would just jump up and throw it. And it was gold. <laughs> Uh oh, I'm worried this uh, guy's going to come. Okay, we got to wrap it up. Oh, no. Hey, we're over an hour here, and I got another episode coming. Well, we haven't done any mental, for mental stuff. We talked mental. Oh, man. Were you crazy? We talked therapy. Okay. We were talking therapy. We talked panic attacks. We talked other stuff. Panic attacking. Yes. We talked the rope analogy I had. Oh, yeah, that yeah. That was good stuff. Good there was, stuff. There was a lot of good stuff. <laughs> Am I out of frame if I'm leaning? <laughs> okay, great. Wow, that's a big camera then. Well, we'll, we'll do it again. Okay, We're fine. Neighbors. All right. Well, uh, well what are we yeah. going to do? Just kick in some another hour? We're at 62 <laughs> minutes. Squeeze in some <laughs> mental stuff. <laughs> what mental stuff were you talking about? I don't know. I thought you were going to ask me like the last time I was sad or... <laughs> well, I'm afraid you, you mentioned your parents. We can't release it. I got fucking old Shelly Siobhan watching at home. <laughs> You're gonna get, I'm going to get you canceled. What? It's okay. I've uh, see me do other podcasts. We'll do. We'll do a part three. Oh my gosh! Part three: the search for one. <laughs> <laughs> but I think this was good. We got some good jokes, right, Lex? Oh. Uh, it's good. A good lot right, of laughs. We'll release those first twelve. We cut everything else. We got some good laughs. We talked. 2016 election which i wasn't thinking we we did touch on panic attacks and anxiety that's I true think. yeah right. social anxiety seven-year-old aids yeah that's good okay yeah i think you did great all right man we'll do another episode all right let's do it not right now i got <laughs> i got another guy coming in but you should hang for it all right i'll watch um oh tell them where you are where do they find you uh okay so andrew so my name which i think will be displayed <laughs> 
Yeah, Andrew Chavon. <laughs> and? I will have given you a, an intro at this point. Okay, so go to my website for the tour dates. I don't know when it's going to be released, but uh, also follow me on YouTube or subscribe. Yes. Because when I big. hit a thousand, I can monetize and I'll have some good stuff coming out on there. Because right now I'm just trickling in. Yeah, you got to get to that thousand because then you can make a nice eight bucks a month. Yeah. Which is nice. But no, the, the YouTube <laughs> subscribers, where it's at, Instagram, you post a ton of shit on Instagram. Yeah, so follow me on there. And uh, it's just my name. My name is all the handles. At Andrew Chavon. Yes. C H S C H. It'll be, it'll be on there. Yeah. S C H I. We're going to put it here. Can you do that? Do you know how to do that? You know no, do it'll that. be on the, the thing. Oh, well, I guess if this is the audio, I guess it won't be. Yeah, it's in the description probably too. Yeah, I uh, should have changed it to be simpler to spell out Siobhan phonetically, but I was already like on it, on Facebook when I started comedy, so. Yeah, I think it's all right. They can figure it out. out. Siobhan right. is a tricky name, but whatever. So, okay. Isn't your uncle a celebrity? His name, yeah, but he says Tony Schiavone. But is it the same spelling? Same spelling. Okay, But well, he pronounced it to, to rhyme with his first name. That makes sense. I'm just saying, they, if they know him, they could figure yeah, it out that way. Yeah, Tony Schiavone. <laughs> you know what, James? I, well, I'll tell you later. <laughs> this is no good for TV? No, somebody somebody was like, you you probably name drop your uncle all the time. Is that how you got on this club? I was like, that's hilarious. No? <laughs> that's hilarious. I didn't even know you were related to this guy until years later. <laughs> Um, <laughs> like I don't think Tony Schiavone opens doors. Well, people think that people say that all the time about people, and we can talk more about it off air. But like, there's people that are like, yeah, you know who her uncle is, and I'm like, what? Okay, yeah, guy he did like color the, commentary for WCW, yeah, yeah, thirty years ago. Yeah, they're like, yeah, her uncle is Scoobly Boo. I'm like the vice president at Rutgers University. What? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> but anyways, okay. Oh shit, this guy's here. All right, we gotta wrap up. I'm Joe List and uh, Queef. Your parents. I don't know. Do I have a sign off on this show? I can't even remember. <laughs> Mindful Metal Jacket. <laughs> <laughs>